With social media sites being used by one third of the entire world, they've clearly had a major influence on society. But what about our bodies? Your five crazy ways that social media and the internet are affecting your brain right now. Can't log off? Surprisingly, 5 to 10 percent of internet users are actually unable to control how much time they spend online. Though it's a psychological addiction as opposed to a substance addiction, brain scans of these people actually show a similar impairment of regions that those with drug dependence have. Specifically, there's a clear degradation of white matter in the regions that control emotional processing, attention, and decision making. Because social media provides immediate rewards with very little effort required, your brain begins to rewire itself, making you desire these stimulations. And you begin to crave more of this neurological excitement after each interaction. Sounds a little like a drug, right? We also see a shift when looking at multitasking. You might think that those who use social media or constantly switch between work and websites are better at multitasking, but studies have found that when comparing heavy media users to others, they perform much worse during task switching tests. Increased multitasking online reduces your brain's ability to filter out interferences and can even make it harder for your brain to commit information to memory. Like when your phone buzzes in the middle of productive work. Or wait, did it even buzz? Phantom vibration syndrome is a relatively new psychological phenomenon where you think you felt your phone go off, but it didn't. In one study, 89% of test subjects said they experienced this at least once every two weeks. It would seem that our brains now perceive an itch as an actual vibration from our phone. As crazy as it seems, technology has begun to rewire our nervous system, and our brains are being triggered in a way they never have before in history. Social media also triggers a release of dopamine feel-good chemical. Using MRI scans, scientists found that the reward centers in people's brains are much more active when they're talking about their own views as opposed to listening to others. Not so surprising, we all love talking about ourselves, right? But it turns out that while 30 to 40 percent of face-to-face -face conversations involve communicating our own experiences, around 80 percent of social media communication is self-involved. The same part of your brain related to orgasms, motivation, and love are stimulated by your social media use and even more so when you know you have an audience. Our body is physiologically rewarding us for talking about ourselves online. But it's not all so self-involved. In fact, studies on relationships have found that partners tend to like each other more if they meet for the first time online rather than with a face-to-face -face interaction. Whether it's because people are more anonymous or perhaps more clear about their future goals, there's a statistical increase in successful partnerships that started online. So while the internet has changed our verbal communication with increased physical separation, My name is Lewis, and I'm here to quickly tell you guys about the dangers of social media. Um, as you saw from the videos, there's a lot of things going on with it. Um, it can obscure your view of the world. Uh, many people like to live lavish lifestyles on Instagram and Facebook and everything. However, that tends not to be the case, and it sets an expectation that is purely unrealistic. Um, as you also saw in the video, um, People are tending to meet each other more online, but however, if you walk into any busy restaurant nowadays, you can actually see people just on their phones instead of enjoying the company of those that surround them. This is a major issue, uh, obviously because our interpersonal skills are actually diminishing as time goes. Uh, personally, with my friends, we play a game that we put our cell phones down on the table, all of them in a pile facing down, and the first person to touch their phone is actually the one who pays the bill. So, obviously nobody wants to touch the phone and it keeps the whole atmosphere in the present and uh, in the general ambience of the situation. Uh, it reduces the productivity. A lot of um, employers have issues with people on their phones not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, it's become an addiction. So maybe you're dozing off the computer, you get a little bored, you don't feel like working. You pull up, you pull up your phone and you start going on Facebook and you spend countless hours doing pretty much nothing. Um, it is a pretty major problem and it makes a lot of businesses from pretty inefficient, so employers tend to frown upon that. Uh, we, there, you get a sense of belonging. Um, you might post a picture up and you get a, a thousand likes. You might feel like you're popular, people like you. And it might not be the case. Maybe they just like what you were doing. Maybe they were just being nice. You don't know the true intention behind it. Or maybe you posted something and nobody looked at it. You might feel like nobody likes you. You might not feel accepted. These are things that come to the territory. But there are a lot of benefits to social media, especially the, the aspect of communication, which I'll talk about now. So with social media, uh, obviously comes the internet, different uh, avenues of communication. A lot of people use their cell phones for social media, obviously. So communication has evolved exponentially in the past couple of years. Um, just about 20 years ago, or a little bit more actually, uh, we had beepers, uh, pay phones, which I have never seen one in a long time actually. 
Uh, but now you can call anybody around the world instantaneously, contact relatives, potential business prospects, employers, anything, anyone you want to contact, you can and you can do it instantly. Um, even if it's somebody you don't know, you can just research the information online. You can instant message them. There's, you know, you can call them. Uh, voice over IP is a relatively simple system. Instead of using a phone line, you put your voice over the internet. So it's cheaper in a lot of cases than using a big carrier provider. You can text message, which most people do a lot of their communication now by texting, specifically only texting. And of course, cell phones provide you with tremendous amount of entertainment, uh, communication avenues, WhatsApp, um, instant messaging, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever you want to do, you can do it on a cell phone. Uh, but those are some of the bases I can talk about communications. I will let um, my partner here introduce himself and talk about some of the risks. Hello, I'm Marley, and I'll be talking today about social media. As you can see, some social media is raking cash by putting advertisements up, right? And the way they do this is they keep track of what you have liked and what you haven't liked, and they offer companies um, like, say, I don't know, Dell or computer companies that, hey, this guy likes computer stuff, he's kind of computer techie, maybe you want to advertise to him. Um, Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat uh, have become a source of, of acceptance. It is very easily um, viewed as if you go out to the street and you start talking and have a conversation with someone, the first thing they probably will ask you is, do you have a Facebook, do you have an Instagram, or do you have a Snapchat? And if you don't have that, you're seen as kind of awkward outside, like a person who's not in touch with, with, with like the world, right? Um, People emphasize their life more on, on likes and views and sometimes become obsessed with their digital lives. If you're online and someone doesn't like your picture, like Lewis said, you might feel bad. You're like, hey, maybe, you know, maybe I'm not meant for this community. Maybe I'm not a good person, you know, whatever you might feel. Um, if you get likes and views, you're like, oh, I'm doing good. But sometimes those likes and views can be negative. Um, I'm going to talk about now security failures. Uh, some of these are very important. Sometimes, some pe sometimes people will leak their personal information online unknowingly. Uh, sometimes they leak where they're at unknowingly. They take a picture next to a store, and then that's a quick cue if anybody knows the store name, knows your channel, the location, where to find you. Um, this was also a recent hack done on iCloud that release private photos of celebrities and individuals that is obviously going to do a big impact on iCloud marketing. Doing personal updates on your social media can lead to the, the release of your schedule to be to business people. For example, if I'm getting out of work and I do a Snapchat, hey, just got to work on my way home, and I do a timestamp with it, and I send it out, and my account is public, anyone can see that. That means if there's someone out there with malicious intent, they'll be like, oh, he's in work prior to this time. So prior to this time, it would be a good time to go rob him, right? That's some people might think. Um, social hacking can lead to your, to once your information being leaked, it's gonna happen by simply receiving a call or opening up an email. Um, if you receive a call, um, there's multiple ways of getting where you're located at via your service provider. And it was in place um, for the help of police officers and law enforcement. But it, like I said, if there's a loophole for that for police officers, other people are going to find a way into it. And in the email, you can get something that's called big graphing, which is basically I encode a code into your to like a pixel in a in a photo. And when your computer loads it, it pings my computer. It sends like a little hey there to my computer, and then my computer stores where your where it got the ping from. Uh, Facebook sites are matched to appear like login screens for other popular sites, for example, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram. And these video sites um, gather your information, they gather your, your passwords, your email, whatever you input, they gather it. And then they sell that information to people who buy it for money, and then they use your account illegally and make you go into a deficit or make your account look bad, although it's not you. Uh, my partner now will be talking about mental health. Uh, 
Um, my name is Sandra, and I'm going to talk about uh, social media and mental health. Like I said, the, the use of um, multiple social media platforms is strongly associated with an increase of dopamine, but also is highly related with depression and anxiety. This is that um, usually people, when they go online, they used to search for um, like the most liked uh, photos and the most liked um, videos and comments. So they, there's a part of their brain that reacts to that kind of stuff. Also, on the other hand, um, when people uh, get to, uh, usually they get, to, they go online to uh, search for um, humorous posts or uh, memes, but they also go to search about um, depressing stuff. And uh, when the, uh, people are depressed themselves, they used to look things that trigger that kind of um, reaction. And them. Also, a multitasking leads to an inferior attention, cognition, and mood. That is that um, when people are on their phones, tablets, computers, they used to they, they don't look all, um, only on Facebook. They usually have Snapchat, have uh, Instagram, all that, and they go from one app to another, just trying to find what other people likes and. Uh, and how to express themselves through that kind of um, social media. Uh, also, social media uh, can lead to lower self-control. This is this is like um, people who are uh, more like likely to go to this kind of websites. Uh, there's been research about that that says that they um, have like bigger amount of deaths, they tend to eat like more um, food that is not appropriate. Um, they tend to buy more things online because of the things that when you search something online, like in Facebook, when you when you go online and um, go let's say Hollister and you search for a nice bathing suit. And, and you then you go to Facebook, you see an ad that says, go buy the, that stuff that is 50% off, and it can lead to that. It can also result in sleep disorders. Um, most of people go, um, when they go to bed, they have their phones and they spend like 30 minutes scrolling down, just seeing um, pictures, videos. And uh, they say that the blue light of their phones um, reduces the melat melatonin, uh, that it's a hormone that um, it's involved with um, sleep. So it kind of um, decreases this. So next, um, Rene is going to talk about family and social media. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Rene. Basically, I'll be touching upon the, uh, the topic with how social media affects families. As we heard previously from all the different sources, it is addictive, social media is addictive. And the parents are not immune to this addiction. Um, the children are, obviously they're addicted to a lot of things that they find in social media. The, it makes them feel good to belong to something, to a social club, to get likes from friends, to meet new friends, to... And so, but parents also, have, uh, you know, like, like I mentioned, not immune to this, they also are addicted to social media. Many times they're more focused on Facebook than anything else. And this breaks down the relationship between parent and, and child because when, when it comes time to be together, they're each um, concerned about what's going on in social media, not in regards to what's going on in their personal lives. Another aspect of it is it's so accessible, social media is so accessible, and these children are encouraged to have cell phones. Most of them have a tablet, they have access to a laptop, home computer, and many times as they're doing homework, they actually deviate and, and start searching online for different topics. And you know, a lot of them, they already find their answers in different posts through different uh, sources, and it's actually bypassing the parents' um, design to be able to advise the child, now they're seeking advice online. And um, this further disrupts, you know, the communication. And 
uh, I wanted to, this happened to me a couple of days ago at work, actually, and that when it happened, I said, great, I can use this for my presentation. One of my managers was speaking with someone, and he was actually saying, can you believe what my child, he asked me about a racial question, you know, about the ratio between this and that, and he did give him the right answer, but the child did, actually didn't believe the parent. So he, he asked Alexa, and Alexa gave him the answer, which was the same answer that the parent gave him. But then the father got upset at the child and says, you know, from now on, don't ask me anything, just ask Alexa. So this is a you know, cut and clear case of how technology through social media is actually, it's just so much information that children are actually bypassing that communication with parents and they're going straight to, to different sources online to find their answers. And, you know, it's, it's, there's so much um, diverse platforms uh, online. Just the other day I was on in Google Plus and there's a myriad of, um, of subjects, whatever you can think of, things that I didn't even know existed, they're out there. I mean, it's for every type of person, personality, whatever you're seeking, you can find there. You know, there's so much clubs that you can join, and children are actually exposed to many of this because a lot of they're, they're more in, into it. They're more into technology than the parents are. They have more time, and so, you know, this this is how I believe um, it influences the, the time spent with the family. You know, because. Um, Many times, the children are no longer interested in having a conversation with the parents at the table like traditionally families used to do. Because now, you know, everybody's so concerned about just going online and seeing what's going on with the neighbor, what's happening, and parents are actually just as fault as the child because they, they, they promote this in many ways. So I think it all starts with the family. You know, they need to get back in track, talk about the values, educate the child, and put some guidelines you know, to put an end to this, you know, spend more time to, with family so that they can build a relationship and not keep breaking down as it is. Um, basically, that's, that's all we have to talk about and I was the last one to speak. Thank you.